when limit screws are this extreme, problems can be seen. Uh, I mean heard. Listen. That's not the limit screw's fault. What we're saying is, if you see the limit screws way off from one another, extreme, something weird is going on, and we got a couple of things right here. We need to dig in deeper. Boy, that sounds terrible. Let's see if we can figure out what the heck they were thinking. What's some logic here? They're going and going and trying to shift and they go and go and it's just not going. They think they need to loosen that lower screw, the L screw, to get it to go further. Loosen, loosen, loosen. It's still not working. It was never the solution to begin with. There's other issues going on with this bike and one of them involves the hanger, which is always a pleasure because we get to use the DAG3 from Park Tool. What's fun about this, of course, these are threaded for Schrader valve, which means we can use different valve caps. We replaced the original. I got dice and a piston. That's half the fun. But now we need to align, and that is the other problem. We do have a slight misalignment on the hanger here, but then we can also use the same tool to check this piece here. It should also be aligned. And then we can even check down here. One, two, three. That is actually a link too far. And that is really one of the big problems here. When this was assembled, they didn't do it correctly. But first, let's get it back out. Let's check that alignment of that hanger right now. We have the hanger nicely aligned. We've got all these others to look at, and that's actually the problem. Back up again. This is not the bike spec for the size of this bracket. This is an aftermarket 46. It's exceeding the capacity of this derailleur. This is an extra piece. This is called a D-link, direct mount, a D-link that lets us attach it and position the derailleur accordingly. But this piece here should not be added on. This aftermarket piece should be taking the place of this. So we are one link too many. So we're going to take this off. Let's reinstall the aftermarket link in its correct position. And notice it is also derailleur, its alignment is also important. I tighten that down. Let's see how this looks. Also nicely aligned, but a little bit different. That's interesting. This is the one that really counts. Next, we have to take this piece out. And that's interesting. How do we know that? We read the manufacturer's literature and that would tell us. So this piece actually needs to be removed. Let's pull this out and have a quick peek to compare. We will notice, aha, aftermarket link is actually longer than the factory link. This is what we're going to remove. It's replaced with this piece. This will now fit right in here. And that will be the appropriate setup. Now it's going to be more better. Secure. 
that's assembled correctly. Before we move on, ooh, look at that housing. <sighs> Having watched our recent video, I know this is more appropriate to be a little bit shorter. We'll just draw the slack up to the front. Let's put it back on the chain ring and let's see what we have. We're going to shift up, up, up. We are going to be, oh, not hearing those noises. This last one, I want to be extra careful. I made it, but remember that L screw? Whoa, yes, this is gonna go right into the spokes. So, time to put it back out. Get ourselves over the, to the adjusting video, how to adjust a rear derailleur. Set the limits. We're going to set the indexing. We're gonna check the B. That all will be good on this bike. And we get a free extra fidget toy. So I'll play with this and say thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time right here. Hmm, that's kind of fun.